Happy Friday, friends. It's Friday. How did it get to be Friday? It's Friday. Oh, like these weeks. It's it, that quote about, uh, what do they say about raising kids? The days are long and the years are short. Um, longest week of my life. So apologies for not being quite as present in this group this week. Um, yeah, hubby's out of town. We have full-time football four days a week starting. It just has been madness, but we're all surviving, right? Hanging in there, waiting for school to start. That's how I am. I wanted to come in today and just talk a little bit about belief and how we build belief and kind of goal setting, whether this is week one for you or whether, hey, Brooke, whether this is week seven for you or you've been doing this for months and are seeing great results or maybe you've hit a roadblock and you're like, ah, oh, do I start over? Did I ever really start? Where am I? Um, so, and they're collecting trash. I probably should not be sitting outside on trash day. That's like dangerous. But so here's what I want to start off with. There is a quote that I read from Tony Robbins and I love this. I've been, hey, Natalie, I've been like thinking on this and I love this. And the first time I read it, I thought that's a typo, but let me read it to you. And then you guys can, we can talk about it. His quote was this, and hopefully you know who Tony Robbins is. He's a kind of a public speaker, motivator, that kind of thing. He says, people are not lazy. They just have impotent goals. That is, goals that do not inspire them. And at first when I read this, I thought, oh, that's a typo. It should have said important goals. But no, it's impotent. And you know what impotency is, right? Like, so the power of that word, that was a very conscious choice about goals that we set. Goals that aren't worth the cost of getting out of our comfort zone. I'm going to let that sit here for a second because I think when we start any sort of weight loss journey, get healthy journey, we have to have a very clearly defined goal because otherwise, why would we make a different choice? Why when we're faced with a choice between a bag of Doritos and a bunch of cucumber slices, are we going to choose the cucumber slices? You have to know where you're headed and have weight to those goals. Okay, so I want you to think about that. For you, it may be, you may be envisioning my goal is a number on the scale, right? Because we're trying to do two pounds at a time. This is kind of like looking at things a little bit differently. I want you to, I'm, I'm challenging you at this point to think, what does that number mean to you? Okay, what does that number mean? And I want you to get out a journal. You don't have to do it right now, but think of it this way. That number on the scale represents something to you. There's a feeling behind it. So Maybe that number on a scale or a dress in your closet, a pair of jeans, maybe it represents a time in your life when you felt vibrant and full of energy and you showed up differently and you felt comfortable in your skin and your face glowed, your skin was radiant and um, you had more energy and you slept better and you just had a zest for life, right? Like you remember that feeling. The more detail you can put around that goal and why it's important to you, not because you just wanna fit in the pair of jeans, there's a reason why that's important to you. Is it because if nothing changes and you fast forward five years, that means that you're lethargic and you're kind of immobile and you have lack of mobility with being with your kids or grandkids and you just don't feel like showing up and you've got brain fog and like all of that. That's powerful. That will drive your decision making process when you start to write down those goals in a more tangible way. When we started this group, if you missed this post, go back to, it's either prep week or week one in the units section. And there's a video that says day one or the day before day one. That video talks about putting in your tracker, the very last few pages, there's like blank pages, making a line down one of them and saying, before I started my to be journey, I felt, and you start to journal how you felt. Why did you say yes to this, okay? If you've been on this journey for a while, maybe you're having success, maybe you make another column. Here's what I'm feeling now. That's what we're going for. But here's where I want to push back. Maybe you have not left the starting gate. Maybe you've been in this group. Maybe you've been following some of the posts. Maybe you haven't quite pulled the trigger or you've dabbled and you've danced a little bit. But there's something in you that just keeps saying, girlfriend, ain't nothing going to change. This is not like anything else. You are not going to make this happen. This will not work for you. 
and you take agreement to those little voices in your head and you stop showing up and you make different choices. Well, it's because your lack of belief in yourself is holding you back. Who does that? I do that. You probably do that. And if you're not doing it now, you've probably done it at some point in your life. And I wanna give you two strategies to think about when we're talking about solidifying that belief in yourself, okay? Solidifying who you are called to be and why you're here, created with a purpose, fearfully and wonderfully made, ready to spend time with your kids and your spouse and be a performer on your job or show up in life, okay? I want you to think about this. Belief is made through little victories, all right? One of the reasons why the tracker works so well is those little micro goals. Let's just say you feel defeated. You're worth nothing. You have not shown up. This is never gonna work. You're kind of thinking those things, but you're like, all right, fine. I'll pull out the tracker. I will track my water. That's all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna track my water today. And you get to the end of the day and you hit your goal with water. Do you know what? You have created a little bit of belief in yourself. You kept your word. You said what you were gonna do and you did it. You accomplished that goal. So that little bar, that little bar of 100 ounces of water, whatever your goal is, gets a little higher. I can do that. Hmm, that's pretty cool, I can do that. So now what? Now we take that bar and we say, all right, I'm gonna track my water tomorrow because I pretty much kicked butt yesterday. I'm gonna track my water and I'm gonna write down my food. Remove the hat of perfection, right? We're just gonna try it, track it, and see. We're gonna write it down in our journal. And you get to the end of the second day, and you're like, that wasn't so bad. And I wrote it down. Wow, that's am I, I'm a rock star. And what happens is that little bit of consistency over time not only creates belief in yourself, but guess what? It yields results. That's when the two pounds starts to happen. And when the two pounds starts to happen, when we focus on the two pound weight loss instead of the hundred pound weight loss and we hit that little micro goal, you're like, you know what? I'm not looking at the hundred. I'm looking at the two. And that two gets added to another two, which gets added to another two. And all of a sudden you're 15 pounds down. All right, maybe I can do this. This is, this is actually working. What's, what is different about this program? That's where belief sets in. But the first step is action. It's action. It's taking the initiative to say, trust the process. I believe that this might work. Maybe you're skeptical still. Drinking your water. That's the first easy thing that you can do. All right, fine. Veggies most. I hear you, Alana. I'm going to eat a few more veggies. Taking that action. Pre-planning your veggies. Okay, fine. I don't want to do it either. Chopping them up on Sunday, putting them in mason jars, having them ready to go so that when you're snacky, you've got that option available. And then the other thing is pre-planning that treat, right? Like deciding, I've, I did not drink a glass of wine this week, but I have decided tonight's the night. <laughs> I'm not gonna go off the deep end, but it's worth it to me. I believe in the whole silly carb concept. I don't believe that we can never have silly carbs, but why not make a choice? And it goes in my planner. It goes as a decision I already have planned. This night and this night, I'm having silly carbs. Cool. There's freedom in that, right? We want to be on the freedom train. Okay, number two. I want to challenge you in a series of beliefs. And this is going to be one that you're going to chew on. So I will post below the graphic of what this looks like. So bear with me. Hang in there. There's several pieces to this puzzle. <clears throat> the first piece is circumstance. The second piece is thoughts. The third piece is feelings, then actions and results, okay? Oftentimes, especially in the fitness and health industry, we're like, we're all results geared and we don't look at the other pieces to it. And in that whole discussion, you might say, well, you don't understand my situation because I have blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I have a chronic illness. I have chronic back pain. I have an unsupportive family. I have fill in the blank. I hear you. I'm in that boat with you. What I want to challenge you on is to think of these things differently, okay? A lot of times we think of circumstances and we think of things that are happening to us, right? Circumstances, um, you know, I heard recently that circumstances don't necessarily happen to you. They might happen for you for your greater good. I love that thought, but here's one I love even more. It's when we start to think of circumstances as just a fact. It's a fact, okay? I have chronic back pain. 
That is a fact, right? It's just a factual thing. We're gonna go with this back pain because this is kind of a neutral example. So we had circumstances. The fact is my back is jacked up. I had scoliosis when I was a kid. I'm highly fused. I have osteoarthritis. I have disc degeneration, blah, 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 blah. That's just factual. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the thoughts. The thoughts are things that I, the feelings that I start to assign to the circumstance. So thoughts are, I hurt a lot. Feeling might be, I am so frustrated. Why does this happen to me? God must not love me, right? This is my cross to bear. I can never, my feeling is I'll never be able to do what other people do. No one gets it. I am isolated and alone. No one knows my story. So those are feelings that I have about this circumstance, okay? And so the old me, the old Stephanie would have said, the action is, I am in chronic pain. No one gets me. I'm already isolated. I can never get in shape. I'm never going to feel good. This is my cross to bear. So bring it on. I'm just going to eat the nachos and drink the beer. I mean, life is short. At least I'll feel good for a little bit. And then I'll pop the pain relievers. And those actions have a result. The result, I'll tell you, for a minute, feels great. Feels good. I get a dopamine high. Like, we don't know what that means. I feel great. You know, like when you eat carbs, you feel great. <laughs> when you drink a glass of wine, you feel great. So that, hey Jackie, that result instantaneously might feel good. And then what? Oh, why did I eat that? Why did I eat that? I feel like crap the next day. And then the cascade starts over. The thoughts come in. See, I told you I can't succeed at a weight loss program. I will never have good health. I don't deserve this. I'm never going to fill in the blank and the cascade continues, right? The circumstance was just a fact. That doesn't change. How we respond to it can. Let's take it a different way. Let's go a different way. Revised Stephanie, reset your mindset Stephanie. Stephanie who is coachable and teachable and willing to show up without an impotent goal, a goal full of power and purpose, and worth getting out of my comfort zone shows up a different way, all right? I still have back issues, by the way. My back is still, I like to say I'm bent but not broken. It's still jacked up. I'm gonna wrestle with chronic pain the rest of my life. That is a fact, okay? The thought I have to that at this point in my journey is I can't change the fact that my back is where it is, but how do I feel about that? I believe that there is a blessing in that suffering we can go biblical on that, or we can just say there is a gift in that because it's teaching me different things. It's teaching me to slow down. It's teaching me to nourish my body in a different way. It's teaching me that nutrition is even more important, being anti-inflammatory, um, care for myself, sleep is super important, um, self-care, those types of things. It is not something that happened against me. It is something that I can inspire people to overcome. Those feelings are more positive feelings. And that's not Pollyanna. That's not fake it till you make it. That is resetting your mind every day. That's, that's a few years of work to get to that spot. So how do I show up differently when I start to feel about the thoughts, about the circumstance? My actions are different. My actions, because I've proven them over and over, when I eat a more anti-inflammatory diet, I feel better. My joints don't ache. When I eat more healthy fats in my diet, I have a more peaceful, balanced hormone profile, right? I'm not yelling at my kids all the time. I show up differently. And as a result, the scale has moved. And as a result, I'm lifting weights again. And as a result, I feel better in my own skin. And as a result, by the way, I wasn't trying to get into this new pair of jeans, but they look awesome now. And I feel confident. So what happens then? I show up differently in life and we start the cascade over. Both of them have choices, right? Both of them are a reflection of the same factual circumstance. The same one. It's the same one. You have the power there. So as we head into the weekend, got a lot of choices, y'all. Silly carbs all around us. Probably some cookouts going on, pool cranking. Got a lot, a couple, if you're in Georgia, you got a couple weekends before school starts. And then it's game on, right? So we're trying to like party it, <laughs> party on. 
what are your circumstances? What are those things that might be holding you back? Okay, I want you to think about those. What are your thoughts? What are your feelings? What actions are you allowing to take place because of those? What are the results? Is it time for a change? And I would argue some of you that change is just starting. It's just saying with a wholehearted, earnest, yes, amen, I trust this process. I believe in the power of the 2B mindset. I believe in this group. I believe in the leaders in this group and I'm ready. I'm ready, I wasn't ready before, but I'm ready now. I would challenge you to do that. Y'all, change is a powerful thing, but it takes that first action. And the only way to believe in yourself is to change the actions to provide that belief system. So happy Friday, have a great weekend. I will post that graphic below so you can kind of ruminate on that this weekend. Let me know what you think about this. Where are you struggling? What are some circumstances in your life that maybe you assigned that to be the reason that's holding you back. Let's talk about them because that's what this group is all about. Love you guys.